you've reached a level of playing that is that, that most players don't reach after 25 years of playing guitar. So I want to talk to you a little bit about your practice. And, and when you first got your guitar, the guitar first came in your hands. Right. Oh. What was your What was your life like? What was that like? Wow. Okay. Well, the real reason I got it at the guitar was this is going to sound really sort of lame. The cool kid at the school had one, <laughs> and that's just being totally honest. I'm, I'm yeah. sure that's more common than people would admit to. But I'd always played music, so when I got a guitar, um, to be honest, I didn't connect with it right away because I found pressing the notes down really hard. I got a, a Telecaster, um, a school Telecaster, and um, it's okay. And um, yeah, but once my calluses developed, I, sort of couldn't, put, I couldn't put it down. You know, um, and I, I started doing the whole smoking water thing, and got into some, some rock bands and things like that, and then um, yeah, I just became obsessed with it at school, you know, surrounding myself with other musicians, and kind of became addicted, and haven't really looked back. So. That's how it goes. Um, yeah. Did you find like, um, like I know for me personally, growing up, I would shut myself in my room for hours at a time yeah. and play. I mean, is that the same same type of deal? Absolutely, yeah. So. Um, yeah, I'd come home from school, I'd play guitar, I'd have dinner, I'd play guitar, I'd maybe go out and skateboard a bit because I did that until I got tall and falling over like hurt really badly. Um, yeah, all the time. I, I played too much as well. I, uh, you know, you get obsessed about guitar and you practice and practice and practice, but when I was about 18 I realized that the practice isn't productive when you play that much. Uh, there's only so much your mind will absorb in one practice session. I found that really interesting. I actually damaged my hands as a result really? because I was I was doing all this, but I wasn't doing this, you know. So since then, I, I I've been practicing less. I practice for maybe an hour and then I'll just stop and do something else. And then say I've been I've been composing. If I come back to it an hour later and it, and I can remember what I played, then that means it's good. That means it's it's got a hook. To it. Sure, sure. So you, you brought up two things. One of it, one of them was finger health. You know, um, playing too much, and, and that's a yeah. question I want to ask you about. Um, you, I mean, you got these long, great fingers playing guitar. I mean, how do you keep them healthy? I know have you ever had troubles before. As oh far yeah, as, yeah, yeah, big troubles. Yeah. Um, so first things first. Um, apologies if you're squeamish. Um, I actually cut a fingertip off oh. uh, when I was 15 or 16. So they sewed it back on. Which is good. Kind of went Tony Iommi style, but it's great. I have like no feeling in that finger, so wow. I like played. But that? yeah, when I when I practice too much, as I said, I, I got um, tendonitis, basically lots of rips in the tendons. Fingertip 12 by both hands. That's when I was um, moving from electric to acoustic, and the action was harder. And I, but I was still just as obsessed about playing. That's the thing. I mean. Your hands, you know, it's, it's muscles just like anything else. You work it out too much and you're gonna damage yourself, so. So, another thing too I, I wanted to talk to you about is there's a whole, I mean, we're, I'm 25 years old, you're 24, you're 25. Uh, we grew up uh, as digital natives, right? We had YouTube, and we, we did yeah. you have YouTube, I guess I should have, uh, instead of yeah, assuming. Yeah, later on, you yeah. know, the one maybe 17, 18, you know, 2006 YouTube was, right? I think so, I think so cause, cause like you that. have some, some hugely popular yeah. songs on YouTube. Yeah. I think right. uh, somebody that I used to know yeah. uh, has fortunate. 3 million views, I think, yeah, and not, getting not, up there, I mean, it's, it's fantastic. So, I know personally... Nothing, nothing, nothing like you know, the old school guys. <laughs> don't, don't sell yourself short. I mean, now, growing up watching guys like you play, uh, and, and put these great YouTube videos. There's a whole network of people out there mm -hmm. that are watching you, and learning from you. So my, one of my questions for you is: You're also uh, a composer. You create music. So what, where's the balance between learning from from a guy that plays like you, learning your songs, replicating your songs, or going out and creating our own transcriptions or uh, composing our own music? Where's the balance that you see there? Well, so so for me, I started by. All right learning songs I saw uh, in tab books and things like that and um, Pierre Van Susen's a big influence and I used to get his, his tab books for, for Christmas presents and stuff. When YouTube happened I, I was exposed to a lot more acoustic guitar music stuff that I hadn't really heard of before and yeah I learnt a lot of the let's see more unorthodox but becoming increasingly orthodox yeah. techniques from these videos and YouTube is a great thing because it's one thing to listen to a sort of modern fingerstyle piece, but to see what's going on, it is kind of, it, it makes you understand the piece more, you know? 
So I started by, by learning a few songs and say I, I discover something new, I would then compose something to try and facilitate it. I wouldn't try and write musical, you know, the, the greatest art in the world, I would write something that was sort of a practical means of practicing a new technique, right? It wouldn't necessarily sound amazing, but it would be a practical and, and fun way of learning a new technique. And that would go on for years and years and years and years, and years and so three or four years or whatever, and at that point, all the, the un more unusual slash usual ways of playing became second nature, just like hammering on or doing a bend or something. And then you forget all the techniques that you learned from observing other musicians, and you just write music from here, and you, you, you know, you have all these strings to your bow and you use the appropriate one ne when necessary. Sure. You know, something that faci facilitates the music. And that's, that's the big difference between a lot, of, a lot of people that have been doing this a while and people that are very new to it is, is you can tell that people have, you know, are, are writing a piece of music based around a technique that they've just discovered. Whereas the people that have absorbed all this stuff and only use it when necessary are the people that have maybe put more time into it. Sure. Anything else? It's great here? advice. It's great no, advice. That's it. um, okay. One last question um, before I, I kind of ask the three generic questions here uh, no is just quickly, what's your creative process? If you're going to compose a new song, is wow. it, do you get up in the morning, do you drink a beer, do you drink, drink coffee? Beer, you know, what's, some music. I feel like everybody's got their own quirks. Sit you know, under I mean? a tree on a <laughs> right? day. No, sing come on. <laughs> no. Um, for me, there has to be, or up until now, there has to be a trigger. So an emotional trigger, like something really sad happening or, or just traveling and meeting people and having an experience that you want to relive in some other crude way I, in a song, you know, a happy thing or a sad thing. Um, if it's a sad thing, then I, I just have to write. I'll just lock myself away and I'll be like, do, 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 and two weeks later I'll have a finished thing, hopefully, you know, touch wood. Yeah. <laughs> but if it's a happy thing, it'll be something that I maybe have to relax more and then just think about stuff and almost you know, force it a little bit, but it's always got to be drawn from something, right? I, I would never be like, um, tomorrow I'm going to write a song. That's not how it works. It'll be like, maybe I'll be thinking about something that's, that's happy, um, and then I'll try and draw from it to write something about that. Um, which is strange in instrumental music. A lot of people don't think there's like themes, or, but there is. You know, I have a song called The Impossible. Yeah. Um, which people think is like a commentary on the way it's played, like, oh, it's, it's impossible the song and impossible, yeah. yeah. But it's not, it's, yeah. it's about something, you know, it's about wanting to change something, but knowing that you can't change something, that's what it's about. And so yeah, there's always got to be a trigger, sometimes it just happens, sometimes you have to force it a little bit, but it's never completely scheduled and forced. Excellent. That makes sense. That makes sense. Thank that you, makes total sense. sense. Um, so the last uh, three questions here, mm. uh, one of them is, who your favorite finger style guitar players right now? Wow. You passed, uh, and then and maybe one up and coming that you may have heard okay, of Okay, cool, yeah. yeah. So, um, uh, Michael Hedges, first of all, was the first guy I discovered doing the crazy eccentric things with an acoustic guitar. And I discovered his music through um, another big influence of mine, Pierre Ben Susan. Uh, Pierre had a song called So Long Michael that was written about Michael Hedges after he died. and. Uh, Michael Hedges, probably his most well-known album, Aerial Boundaries. Track number two is called Ben Susan, which is about here. So there was a little connection about that. Um, one guy I want to give a shout out to especially is my buddy from Helsinki called Petru Sariola, who's just insane. Like, I, I, I'm trying to yell about Petru Sariola to everybody I meet. Just listen to his music, go see him live. I actually had to battle a YouTube troll on his behalf. Really? Because someone was like, oh no, it's, it's fake, it's fake, it's fake. And I've done like get five or six calls with the guy. It's, it's just he has a very unique way of playing um, and uh, creating a very clean sound. And sometimes I think people people miss what's going on because it sounds maybe too clean, you know. Wow. So I just I just want to give a shout out to people to say go see him live, you know, because it's seeing is believing. 